Hello. Hopefully I am straight now. Pod to do the videos with and um, we're having a little bit of a hiccup trying to get it to work. I keep I'm, I I keep on coming up um, sideways. So I'm gonna give my Chris Chris is back there. It's my husband. Um, we're gonna give him a minute or two here to see if I'm coming up right. Okay, so we are going the right way. Okay, um, I'm Kelly. Uh, my business is Chestnut Junction, and we specialize in e-patterns for primitive dolls, primitive, primitive crafts, and embroideries. Um, today, we have a doll pattern. Or from um, I Heart Annie. Um, so uh, all of our e-patterns before we've been using a, a, we have a doll assembly sheet in the e-patterns when you print them out that shows, shows you how to uh, assemble your doll body. From Basically, this point on, as soon as I can get the new instructions written up, I'm going to uh, edit that a little bit. And um, It's basically the same thing. I just, I've just i added one step. We're just going to update um, that doll assembly sheet. It's, it's amazing. Um, the good Lord, in my opinion, uh, just turn uh, into blessings because with this whole coronavirus thing, um, we have really picked up a lot of new um, customers, and I'm getting a lot of people who've never sewn before and uh, have a lot of questions. So, just kind of want I'm going to come on and do some videos uh, and teach you guys how to um, just do some basic things. Uh, with the um, with the pattern so like I said today we're going to use um, this is our pattern number 458 I heart Annie and when you get uh, when you get her she's going to pieces here focus on getting uh, the, here's her leg and her arm is over here so um i've already got everything uh i've already got everything set out in steps hopefully i remember uh my steps and what i had down for each one if not my hubby back there um he, he'll remember and keep me on track with this stuff so for our doll body we have our our doll body cut out and we have our leg and we have our arm piece so we have cut out a piece of muslin this is 36 inch wide muslin um and it's this is there's it's doubled Let's see it's doubled 36 inch wide muslin and it's about 12 inches from top to bottom so i'm gonna go ahead and turn you down so and like during this whole video, I'm going to be moving the camera around so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, I know it's going to be janky at some point in time, but uh, basically I'm not, I'm not here to um, get any awards for my um, videography. Um, I'm here to share information and hopefully give you guys some tips uh, to help you along with, with making your doll. So I'm going to turn you down now. Get you adjusted here. So, okay. So, 
we're going to get our doll body placed on here. And we're only going to be doing one doll body, but with the arms and the legs, you're going to have to do, um, you're going to have to trace these patterns twice. So we've got our, we got our pins. I've got a magnetic pin holder. Works good. So we're going to go ahead and pin our pattern pieces down. And uh, another thing I should mention is to, whenever you're tracing your pattern pieces, you want to make sure that all of your, um, and the reason I'm, I get off track here. We're going to go back. The reason I am tracing these up and down is because you want to go with the grain of the fabric. And how you find the, the grain of the fabric is from your selvage edges over here and these selvage edges um you know those are like where the material is hooked to the um to the machine whenever they manufacture um you know the fabric so this is muslin we're using and it's it's not the cheapest muslin it's not the most expensive muslin i usually go for like the 299 a yard muslin or the 399 a yard muslin and um, I'll use a coupon. Um, those Joanne coupons, I, uh, I know um, Hobby Lobby has coupons too. Um, we've got these traced down, and the reason I left a space here is because you're gonna you're gonna need two of each of these. And what we're gonna trace onto our muslin with is I use a Mark Mark Be Gone pen. But this is just, it's a water-soluble uh, pen that you trace with. Um, there are generic brands. I think Walmart carries a generic brand. But what these are, uh, you, we're going to trace. It, it's blue ink, and then we're going to sew on these trace lines. So, go ahead. And you just trace around your doll pieces here. Just real, it's just, it's, it's simple. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because whenever you go to sew, you just try to keep a straight edge. Because like sometimes here like that, I got a little offline there. So we got that traced, and we'll go ahead and we'll trace this leg. Chris, is everybody still seeing me? Am I in focus? Yes. Chris is my husband. He helps me out so much. Trace an arm. Okay, so you guys get the idea of that. We've laid down our pattern pieces on our fabric. We're keeping them with the grain. And like I said, the grain runs along with the with this uh, selvage edge. Cross grain is running across the grain. You don't want and you don't want your pattern pieces going opposite. You don't want your body going with the grain, and then um, going and tracing your arms and legs the opposite direction. That's that's not going to work out. That's going to shorten up your arms and your legs. So you want everything running in the same direction. Um, now, whenever I would go to trace, I would just come in like that, you know, and pin them back down and, uh, and trace those again. So we're going to set this piece aside. Whoopsie. All right, so 
this is our this is our next piece and now you see that we have got our body traced we've got our two arms traced and we've got our two legs traced and I also want you to take note that we did this all in one step we, we didn't just cut out the body and sew it together we didn't just cut out the arms and so that we, we traced everything at the same time um, so now my my next step uh, would be I'm gonna go ahead and cut cut these into smaller sections here That's my chair squeaking. Okay, so now we've got our body, our two arms, and our two legs. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab the sewing machine. And when you sew these, you see where I've marked, we're leaving the tops of these pieces open. That, those are our legs, so I've, I've marked leave, leave the tops open. We're going to leave the tops of the arms open. And for this one, this is the body. And I'll do this a little bit more detail here in a second. But let me see if you can see that. There's our body. But see, our, our new, this is the step we're adding in. Um, we're going to leave a slit on the side open. And when I sew that, I'm going to tell you why. So for right now, and I probably I will probably be um, adjusting the camera here again, so you guys can see. Maybe I'll move you all the way over here. I think that's a little better. Okay, so we've got. We've got our legs here that we're going to be sewing. I'm going to sew one leg for you. So I'm going to turn on, and I don't know if you guys can see this too. I sew myself. These are my, if you have an adjustment for your um, stitch length, I keep mine on two. <clears throat> so we're, we're going to sew this leg together and start at the top. I need to find my pedal here. I'm going to start at the top um, and you're just going to sew on these trace lines uh, and whenever I start I'll do a couple stitches and then I hit my reverse button and do a couple stitches back just to lock in those stitches and then we're just going to sew right on our, our traced line here And get down here to the, the the foot and we're just gonna turn our fabric a little and you see you can I don't know if you can see but I went off the, the line a little bit you know but it's no big deal um, these are primitive crafts and they're made by hand and nothing has to be perfect. So when we get back up here to the top, we're gonna do a couple back stitches again just to lock that in place. And we're gonna go ahead and so we've got our, our leg stitched up and we left the top open. So now we're going to move on to our body. I'm trying to see if you guys can see. Okay. So we're going to leave that place on the side open and we're going to leave the bottom open. So I'm going to, I always start where, um, because I'm right handed, I, I tend to, to sew. Um, with the the extra on the outside if I made sense with that. But we're starting down here at the bottom of the doll body. Do a couple stitches 
and we're going to back up. So we're just going to come up around and sew on this doll around this around her side. When you get around that neck, if you need to stop, lift up your, your foot there and readjust and do a couple more stitches. Stop, readjust, do a couple more stitches. That's perfectly fine. But we're just we're sewing along this um, this blue line, sewn right on top of it, that we um, traced with our disappearing uh, tracing pen. And later on, uh, whenever you would coffee stain your doll uh, and you get your doll wet, that, that blue line, it'll disappear. Um, if for some reason you're not going to coffee stain your doll, then uh, once you get your doll put together and she's stuffed and everything and you're still seeing those blue lines, go ahead and like take a squirt bottle or um, you know, wet rag and just, you know, get that fabric wet and those lines will disappear. So, can you guys see where I'm getting down? I can't tell if you can see or not. Um, trying to look. We're getting down to where I'm going to leave an opening on the side. Okay? So, I'm going to finish getting around this shoulder. And then I'm going to come down here and stop, do a couple stitches back, um, cut off our thread, and then I'm going to come back down here to the bottom. And start and reverse. Sew to the bottom of the doll and then start and reverse again to lock those stitches in place. So, can you see where I, I, left, I left this opening here on the side, or on the body, and I also... I also left the bottom open. Okay. So I'm trying to remember if that is, is that it for that step? Um, you want to turn and snip. Okay. Leg, okay. So we are going to come back. Still, still using this piece here. So we, we did sew a leg together. So I'm going to take, take the pins out of the leg that we sewed together and I am going to cut out around this leg. Am I still in focus? Yeah. Okay. So we're cutting out like about a quarter quarter of an inch um, outside of our outside of our stitched line. And here again, we we left the top of that leg open. So we're gonna stick the other leg aside for right now um, and what I do is uh, I'll tell you in my patterns too to snip around the outside so things don't pucker we're just going to take this is our still using our leg pattern piece we're just going to go along the edge here And we are going to snip. Okay. And like especially when you get down here around. 
Is it the, are we having problems with the lights? Is that what's going on? Does that help any? What about that light up there? I don't want to be filming in the dark. Can you guys see how I've snipped around these edges? And what this does is it just allows the uh, fabric to move whenever you turn your um, turn your pieces inside out. We're just going to snip all the way all the way around this leg. It's good to have sharp scissors for this too. I love my Fisker scissors. That's the only thing I use is Fisker scissors. I remember years ago because um, I actually worked at Joanne Fabrics at one point in time when I was younger. But whenever I was uh, whenever I was younger, does anybody remember that um, Joanne's would have what they called the scissor doctor? Um, I don't know, like every couple months he'd come in the scissor doctor and he would sharpen uh, sharpen your scissors. He didn't. I don't, they don't do that anymore. But yeah, that would make your scissors last a long time. So we have our body piece here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut that out too. Like I said, you're just cutting like a quarter of an inch outside of that sewn line. Actually, these scissors seem like they might need might need sharp. I, I also I have a uh, Fiskars makes a, a scissor sharpener too. Um, I don't know if I have it around here. Oh, I can I can see it. They make a scissor sharpener too. Okay, I'm gonna cut along that bottom, and this is our doll body we're cutting out. And remember, we left the bottom of the doll body open, and we also left a slit here in the side. And you are going to snip around uh, the edge of your body, just like we did the leg. You're going to do that for um, for all of your pieces. So I think I think we're moving on to the next step. I have to ask my coach back there if we're moving on to the next step yet. Well, you skip this part. Yeah, see, um, I get off track here. He says I skipped a part. Um, okay, so the next part actually is going to be to turn. To turn a leg so I already cut out and, and sniffed this leg so I I actually I got off track I did not follow the plan we had made so uh, this is my stuffing tool um, in my last video I was telling you guys that um, you actually polyfill used to give you free stuffing tools um, it's just, it's like a wood, it's almost like a wood chopstick. Um, this one actually is not one of the old polyfill stuffing tools. This one is just a wooden dowel that, uh, you know, you can get dowels at, I think it it's probably looks like a quarter of an inch dowel. Um, you can get these at your, uh, hardware store. You can get them at the craft store and I think they come in like three foot lengths. So I think like, you know, we cut these down to like maybe four pieces um you know with just like a little hacksaw um but we uh like sanded down one end and actually see i use multiple i use tools for multiple things that that's got black paint on it because 
I actually was using this tip um, to make eyes, like dots, eyes, um, on another doll. So that's what I'd use that for. Um, but as far as stuffing tools go, you can do a Google search online for stuffing tools. Um, and there's there's some out there, um, you know, they're, they're specifically, um, like I know as we were looking at one last night that actually came in a set, and it was a set of three different ones. Um, but I say use whatever you're comfortable with. Um, some people, uh, I know, use knitting needles. I had a lady the other day tell me that, um, I should because you're not even looking at my face. I should be working here. We're going to turn this doll out. Or the leg. We have the leg pattern piece. Okay. This is how I do it. I just kind of stick my piece on there. And I just push it down and turn it inside out. And then you use, you know, your tool that's in there. Just use it to kind of um, open up that leg. Oh, do I have an, did I have another one? Many things going on right here. Another leg. Oh, I'll just move on. Okay. So, with that being said, I think I've messed. My husband spent so much time helping me put all these steps together, and I've I've just royally screwed it all up. Because normally I don't go by steps whenever I make a doll. I just know how to do it, and I do it. Um, so, now we're at a place where we have um, both of our arms sewn and turned right side out. And then we have both of our legs, and they're sewn and turned right side out. And all of them were left un unstuffed at the top. And then we have our body. Um... It, it you know it's been sewn turned inside out the bottom is open and the side is open so I'm going to take um, I'm going to take a leg and I'm going to show you how to stuff a leg I'm gonna grab some polyfill um, and my stuffing tool and I feel like and this is just how I do it, and I never say anything that I do is the right way to do it, but this is how I do it. I will grab a wad of stuffing and grab my leg, all right, and I'll hold this wad of stuffing in my hand and open up the leg there, and I will just take little bits and just stuff it down in there and, and do like three or four bits at a time. Um, and then put your stuffing down and then I'll take my stuffing tool I'm going to use the blunt end I'll take my stuffing tool and I'll just work that stuffing down down into the foot here and stuff stuffing is probably, I would say, the most time-consuming part of the whole doll-making process. Um, I had a cute little email the other day um, that uh, a lady told me that, um, why does her doll look like it had bad liposuction surgery? Um, <laughs> because she had so many gaps in her stuffing. And I was like, you need small bits of stuffing and you need to pack that stuffing really tight. Um, and you definitely need a stuffing tool. But we just get little bits at a time. And you just, you just get that tool in there and you just, you know, work it in there. Um, till it's tight until it's rounded and 
uh, till it's you know looking looking good. You don't want big uh, you don't want big gaps in your um, in your stuffing. You want you want everything you know stuffed in there nice and tight. And I know like um, as far as polyfill goes, there's two different um, polyfills, two different stuffings that um, people use. And uh, that is the polyfill, which I'm using right now. And then um, other, I know a lot of other people use, it's called Morning Glory. And it is, uh, it's a little bit more Course of a stuffing and it's really good for primitive um, for primitive dolls uh, it makes them heavier and it's just it's a coarse like polyfill tends to be lighter and more slippery where the um, morning glory it tends to be to me a little bit more like cotton but it packs it packs nice and it actually like for for primitive dolls, it gives you like just kind of a, a better hefty, uh, lumpy feeling where like this polyfill, it's a little bit um, like plumper, airier. Um, so I like to, especially like for Raggedy Ann's, I, I like to use the... Uh, the polyfill because it just it makes them uh, it just gives them a fuller a fuller look and and I noticed too between the two stuffings uh, the the polyfill which is what I'm using the slipperier one it will it doesn't coffee stain as heavy um, the morning glory that I said was like the coarser one um, when you coffee stain that one it tends to give you uh, a little bit of a uh, a darker finish I think because it's soaking up more coffee because it's just um, it's just heavier actually my sweet hubby is is, is grabbing um, what the difference is. This is polyfill. Um, it's just, it's light and it's, it's got kind of a, a bounce to it and it's, it's a little shiny, you know, a little slippery. That's the polyfill. This is, um, this is the, the morning glory here. Can you see the difference? This one is more like cotton or like a, um, a really really thick like quilt batting um, but it's you know it's got a it's got a, a dollar finish it's it's woven a little coarser um, like I said I would use the morning glory for more primitive things that you want some heft and weight to and uh, for my raggedy ends I use the polyfill um, Those are the two uh, different polyfills that um, seem to be the, the mainstream of what everybody seems to use. Okay. My coach is coaching me back there. So my husband helps me so much. He really does like you'll see things on Facebook where you know my hubby this or my hubby that and I'm sure a lot of it you know is very 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 much true um, but my hubby literally he's my my right hand I'm still, see I told you, I'm still stuffing on this leg. Stuffing is 
like I said, the most time consuming uh, aspect of doll making. And if, like some people just craft, you know, for, for themselves or for gifts and, you know, they don't need a whole lot of supplies. They're just gonna make this one thing. But if you're doing this professionally, uh, I know a lot of us that do it professionally, we'll, we'll cut out, you know, things for 10 doll bodies at a time. So like, you'll have 20 legs, you know. Um, take your polyfill, you know, and your legs with you if you're, you know, if you're going somewhere. If you have, if you have to take somebody to a doctor's appointment, um, take that with you, sit there and, and stuff you know, these parts while you're waiting for stuff. Um, because whenever, if you if you do this professionally, um, you do this stuff in bulk. And you get faster as you go. I think making Raggedy Ann's is probably one of my favorite things to make. Um, they're just, they're happy. I, I like the happiness of them. I like really, actually, I like all primitives. We've been doing more farmhouse stuff lately, and now I'm telling, see how we get our progress with this. Now I'm telling Hubby that I miss my primitives. Um, I like the, the, the light colors um, of the farmhouse look, but now I, I'm, I'm, I'm missing, like, I don't know, primitives just give you such a homey, such a homey feeling. And like, I thought that like, all this farmhouse stuff is, you know, becoming more popular and whatnot, and we'll never see, I, see primitives again, but I don't think, Maybe they're not as popular right now. Maybe. I don't know. But I don't think they're ever going to go away. I think they're going to come back. Because they're just, they're, they're too warm and homey. Okay. So, you want to stuff all of your limbs. So, this, you want to do two legs and two arms. And you, you want to stuff both of those to, to about halfway. All right. So, now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch a joint um, across this leg. And not only does this joint hold that stuffing down in there, but it here it gives gives your doll leg some movement. So I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. And for this one too, I I like the the leg to be towards the inside of my sewing machine. I think it just gives me a little bit more control here so we're going over the sewing machine and can you see I have this positioned here all right so we're just going to go under here I gotta find my foot my pedal again there there's my pedal so we're gonna go ahead and sew that joint across here going to go ahead. Oh, I need to move you guys again. Okay. We ha still have our doll body here. We stuffed and sewed off the joint on the leg. So you need to do that for your other leg. And then you need to do it for your two arms. We prepared this earlier. We now have all of, both of our legs sewn. And we have both of our arms sewn. And then we still have our body here. 
with the um, bottom open. The bottom is open. And we left we left a place here on the side open. So do you see where down here at the bottom of the body we've got an inch or so. So the, the body's together and we've got this slit here and we, we left this slit open for stuffing. So the next thing we are going to do is sew our our legs in. So we're going to stick our arms aside for right now and we're going to grab our pins. Okay. So we have our doll leg here. We have the top of our doll leg. So we're going to take the top of our doll leg and we're going to insert it in the bottom of the doll body and you want to make sure like they'll see you can see you have a your blue trace line is in there so you want to make sure that you are getting that top of that leg uh, up in up in and just a little bit past that that blue trace line because that blue trace line is essentially where we're going to be tracing on top here so you want to get that leg in far enough uh, to clear that blue trace line so we're going to take a pin and we're going to go ahead and and pin that leg in place okay so we have our other doll leg here and we are going to Stick it in the same way we did the other one. And like whenever you go to put this uh, this doll leg in, we're going to try to space it out evenly uh, at the bottom here. And then you want to make sure the bottoms of your feet are even. Okay, so they, that that looks good. We're going to hold that in place there and go ahead and pin this leg in. So we're going to pick this, I'm going to pick this up. Can you see this? I'm going to pick this up and make sure that our feet are even. And if they're not even, which I think they look pretty good. Can you see them? The feet look pretty good. Um, if they're not even, go back up into here and readjust um, so your feet are even at the bottom. Oh, okay. Whenever uh, my husband was just reminding me of this, whenever we pin these in, at least the pins we use they're the 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 balls at the top they can catch in your in your foot there on your sewing machine because when I sew I'm going to be sewing this way along the bottom of the body um, so you want to make sure if that's the way you're sewing too you're going to want to make sure these balls are this way towards the body so your your foot doesn't hit them um, Whenever I sew these, I've never hit a pin. Can you see my pins? I literally will be sewing over top of those pins and giving myself like a quarter of an inch. Um, uh, edge there. So just, like I said, I've never hit a pin. Hopefully you don't hit a pin and and break, you know, your needle or anything. But I'm just, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew now. I'm going to go ahead and machine sew um, across the bottom, across the bottom here. So let's go back to the sewing machine. Like I said, I like to do it with the legs facing the inside of my sewing machine. 
I just want to make sure your legs are still still straight in there. And we're going to go ahead and sew this off across the bottom. And I can already tell you my there again a good was that my machine was giving me a snafu there for a second. So we're just sewing right across the bottom and see how it just, I don't know how it magically does it, but it doesn't hit the pins. So now we've sewn uh, those legs into the bottom of the body. So we can move this out of here. We can take these pins out. And now your legs are sewn into your body. Okay. And I think for the rest of this, I'm going to move you up. There we go. So I'm, I'm cutting, I'm cutting the um, thread off of that body. And there is our doll body. Our legs are sewn. They are sewn across the bottom. And see, now we have this opening to stuff our body. Okay, so I'm going to get some more stuffing. And I do this the same way. Maybe I won't need to move you down a little bit. Okay. Um, there's your your opening for the for the stuffing. I, I grab a big big wad of stuffing. I, I I personally don't like big wads of stuffing. I think that's what leaves the little holes. Um, I think that lady tells me her doll looked like it had bad liposuction. Um, I like small pieces, and I will hold on to a big wad of stuffing over here on the side, and I just. I just keep ripping it off and stuffing it in. And then once I get a wad of stuffing in there, I will go ahead, see how the stuffing's in her belly right now? I'll go ahead and take my fingers and I'll just stuff all that up into her head and just get get your fingers up in there and just I mean really push you get the best results from your doll uh, whenever your uh, stuffing is, is packed so I grabbed a, another wad of stuffing Just keep pulling it off in little pieces. That one, that one's stuck. This is just isn't with dolls on these little pieces. I I think you should use little pieces. Um, so here again, that wad we just stuffed in, it's in her belly. So we're just gonna take our fingers, and we're just gonna work it up into her head. Okay, so now would be the time, her head looks like it's about, you know, half full. Now would be the time I come in with my stuffing tool. And it's right into the side. And just start working and packing that, that stuffing in there. I say stuffing in a doll is like potato chips. I mean, you can't have enough. You know, uh, if somebody showed me a doll and said, oh, it's fully stuffed, I bet you I could go in <laughs> and, and pack it and jam more stuffing in there. Because even like for your, your face and when you coffee stain and, and bake and all that stuff, I just like totally just 
really feel like you get the best results um, whenever things are stuffed really full because even when you go to paint on the front of, of the doll's face, you know, if, if your doll's not stuffed firm, when you go to paint and, and draw on the front of your doll's face, if it's not firm, you're not going to have a nice solid surface to work on. So you want to make sure that, and I just, and see how it's all lumpy? Yeah, you, you just keep working. Uh, you get your fingers up in there and you work, 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 and smooth, smooth, smooth. See, it's looking better. Another water stuffing. I, I've stuffed, goodness, I bet you I've stuffed thousands upon thousands of dolls because whenever I was, uh, when I was a kid, uh, my mom used to do crafts um, and sell them to try to supplement the family income and that was back in the day whenever, does anybody remember those long-eared bunnies? Um, they had the really long, long ears and they'd have pretty little dresses. But that's when I first learned how to make dolls was those long-eared bunnies. And then, uh, the attic babies. Uh, McCall's came out with those attic baby patterns. And so we made, uh, We made, I mean, just a ton, a ton of those long-eared bunnies and a ton of those, um, those attic babies. So... We would be sitting here um, for a while if I continued to sew or to stuff this. But you can see, um, you just keep on packing and, and working. And um, whenever, uh, whenever you get to the neck, this is another question I get all the time. Whenever you um, get to the neck, you know, I people tell me I always have a crease in the neck and I, I get creases in the neck. I just think it's, it's part, part of the whole process. Um, this, like this is a doll in the making. Do you see how this doll has a very square neck? Um, you're not going to get, um, you're not going to get a crease on, on that. Um, where you're getting creases at is whenever we have the neck that is uh, smaller than the head and shoulders. That's it's it's that is it's just you're going to get creases. My best advice for that is just do the best you can. Lots and lots of stuffing helps. Um, and if you and I'm going to show you on the next piece that I do here. Actually, I think, are we done with this piece? I'm moving on. Yeah, moving on. Okay, so we're done with this piece. You're going to continue stuffing. Um, and the more stuffing, the better. And uh, I will tell you, too, I, I don't buy those tiny little bags of stuffing. I get, like, I think 10-pound, or it's 10-pound boxes of polyfill. And um, if you watch... Uh, because I think Joann's runs pretty high on the price of the polyfill. But my favorite place to get polyfill is Walmart. And if you watch online or even if you're just in Walmart all the time, um, Walmart will have rollbacks on that polyfill. So whenever they, they have the rollbacks, I will usually get four or five boxes um, of polyfill at a time. And as 
far as that bulk pricing there and tips, that goes with the same thing with the, the muslin. Uh, anybody who does a lot of crafts or is doing this professionally, we buy muslin by the bolt. And like I said earlier, I don't go with the cheapest muslin, but I absolutely do not go with the most expensive muslin. Um, the cheap muslin is just a little bit too flimsy and you can see through it. So I tend to go with muslin that's around $2.99 to $4.99, $3.99. I, I really would not spend more than $4.99 a yard for muslin. And that's even with um, my coupon. So I recommend, like if you do this all the time, uh, to save money, buy stuffing when it's on sale. Um, and... Uh, the muslin I buy it by the bolt and Joann's will so Joann's at least once a month maybe or once every other month runs a coupon for 60% off so if you can use that 60% off to get a bolt of muslin that that's a good deal there um, Hobby Lobby though they I, I think Hobby Lobby still runs uh, a 40% off coupon most of the time so that would be another good place to, uh, you know, get your... But you don't have to buy a whole bolt. You can go and buy like five yards if that would help. Um, but moving on here, uh, this is what we now have. Uh, we've finished stuffing the body together, okay? And I, I guys, guys, I want you to see this. Do you see the neck? It's creased, it, but it's it's full. It's not going anywhere, all right? And, you know, if you are going to have a crease in your neck, make sure that crease is in the back, you know, because she kind of looks better anyway. If the crease is in the back, it just kind of makes her, you know what I mean, makes her head pop a little bit. Not that you are, you know, striving to have a crease, but... When you have necks, I don't know anybody who isn't really going to have a crease. Just make sure that crease is on is on the back of the neck, okay? Um, but we, we finished stuffing this really full, okay? And there is that opening. See, I stuffed it so full, there is opening com or stuffing coming out the side. So I am going to um, move you down again because I am going to show you how to um, sew that opening shut. I use uh, crochet thread. It's the cream, not white, it's like a cream crochet thread. That's like my go-to for everything. So we're gonna go ahead and knot up some crochet thread and we're gonna um, put it on a, on a needle here. I say, yeah, yes, I do put thread in my mouth. My germs will get off whenever I bake it, when I bake it anyway. <laughs> it's not wanting to go in here. Okay, guys. We have it threaded. I threaded it, or I knotted it. There we go. Where is the key? Oh, ooh, there it is. Knotted it at one end. Okay, put it, my needle, tail at the other end, okay? So, I'm going to move you down here. So, you see we have this opening left here, all right? I, myself, like to start, maybe this is better here. Can you guys see this? I'm going to take my needle and thread. And I'm going to go in and catch that, okay? And you just kind of want to, you just kind of want to push the stuffing in. And I just do a simple stitch together.
and I like the um, I like the uh, crochet thread because um, especially the cream crochet thread I like it because it it it, uh, it paints well and it coffee stains well um, but it's also it's it's sturdy um, I used to use thread like just thread like you know you would use on your sewing machine and it would break all the time so like the uh, crochet thread it is thicker uh, but not too thick and it um, it's strong it, it, it holds it holds in place But I'm just squeezing this together and stuffing that stuffing down in that hole as I go along. You can even take the end of your needle and stuff that in there. And guys, don't expect yourself to be perfect because making uh, making dolls is it's it's something that takes practice. You know, the first thing you make isn't gonna gonna look. I nodded that off. Did you guys see me nod that off? I'll do it one more time, and then I just flipped it through and pulled it. And then what else I do instead of just cutting this off, this is another tip just for neatness. I take my, my needle here and I poke it right right back down in there where my knot was. Okay. And then I'll just go through the front of the body and I'll just pull. Okay. So now that thread, it's hidden. My mom taught me how to do that back when we were making those bunnies. <laughs> so then you'll just cut this thread off of, and it'll just, you know, normally it goes in. Today I'm doing a live and it doesn't go in. Um, but I was telling you, don't don't expect yourself to be to be perfect on this stuff. Making dolls is it's an art. Um, and it, it does, it, it takes time. Um, now after I got this sewed together, this is whenever I would go back and give this girl a thorough massage. <laughs> and I mean that literally. Um, let me pull you back up here. Okay, but your doll, now I would take her and I would just, I'm gonna give her just some squeezes here, you know? I'm gonna give her a good rub down. All right. And this just helps. Oh, Ter hey Terry, how are you? I haven't been looking at the notes, I just saw that. Terry has been uh, shopping uh, with us since the 90s. She's, she's, I consider her a friend. I'm glad you came, Terry. Um, so yeah, we are working our doll over, just trying to get that, um, that, uh, that stuffing moved around. See, like I said, I, there, there's, there's a crease on the back. There is. Um, but whenever you go to put your, um, dress on, uh, We're gonna, um, the dress is gonna gather around the, the neck. You're not even gonna see that. So, um, my tip for that is, <coughs> it's totally normal to have a crease on the neck. Um, and when you do, just make sure it's on the back and the more stuffing, the better. Because if she is like, you know, 
you don't want your dog to go like this in her head. If you get enough stuffing up in there, you're doing good in there. Um, there uh, shouldn't be any problems with that. Um, I need to pick up the pace here because I just got a notification on my phone that my battery's going low. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to sew on that arm. All right, so um, got our need our, our thread there, and we're going to go ahead and do a knot. Okay, I already I already did sew one on one for you guys. So we sewed one arm here. Okay, so make sure your arms are facing the right way. But I just line up the doll or the line up the arm there on the shoulder. Make sure that her arms are looking even. And then I just, I hand, let's see if we need to do this one. I just hand stitch this in place. And there's, here again, no, no right or wrong way to do this. We're just trying to get, you know, this sewn on here. My husband, because I told him I have a low battery, <laughs> is uh, frantically <laughs> trying to get the plug um, to get me into some electricity um, on my phone. You guys probably can't. Can you see better that way? This one actually. But we're just stitching this arm. Did you get me into some electricity, honey? Yes? yes? Yes. Thank you. Everybody give Chris some some uh, love for uh, finding us some electricity. I told you he's my right-hand guy. He takes care of me. I'm very, I'm, I'm, ser I'm so blessed um, with my husband, so blessed. See, I only got it stitched across there, so I'm just going to finish this off. So is, is this um, is this the meth method that most of you guys already use for sewing your dolls together, or is that extra? Um, is that extra? this little, this opening here on the side, is that, you think that's gonna, is that something new to you? Is it gonna make it easier, you think? Because from here on out, I think we're going to try, we're gonna make up a new doll pattern assembly sheet. Um, and, um, and do it with this opening on the side. So I knotted that off in here again. I'm just gonna stick it in, let it come out, you know, somewhere else. And then cut that off. Okay, so, sorry for the bumpity bump so we have our finished doll now you see her arms are sewn on we sewed her legs into the seam and then we we gave her an opening uh, there on the side so um, going to ask anybody if you have any more questions um, before we, we go. Um, 
I like doing these lives. I like sharing, uh, like sharing with you guys. I'm sure because this is only, I think this this is our second or third live. Um, I'm still in that, you know, place where it's like a little nerve wracking. Like I know I'll get I'll get used to this and get better at it. Um, but I I like to come in and share with you guys. Um, uh, but I, I want to give you information that I'm sitting here trying to read comments now. Um, I want to give you guys information that, that you know, you want to know about things that are, are giving you, um, are, you know, giving you some problems. Or uh, you can even tell me totally different things that uh, that you'd like to see that don't even have to do with a doll. I mean, maybe um, we have thought about uh, doing... Uh, like um, projects, um, you know, like maybe buying a pattern and like taking an afternoon and, um, you know, going from start to finish with it, but that would probably take a long time. I don't know how many people would want, you know, want to do all that. So maybe we'll just stick to little things here and now, but, um, you know, uh, I do dolls, I do primitives, I do embroidery. Um, I, I also like to paint. I don't know if anybody else is interested in painting. Um, I, I like to, um, I've been trying my hand at, uh, at door hangers here lately, so I don't know if you guys would enjoy seeing that. Um, still trying to see, honey, we, Hey, boss man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. No, see, Kim, are you talking about you have dyed five yards of fabric at a time and then you go ahead and you trace and sew your dolls together? And I, the reason I'm asking you that is, is because, um, if you're using the 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 blue um, the blue pen, you know that needs to disappear. I was wondering if you had pre-done your muslin, if that was um, an issue when you needed that blue ink to disappear. Thank you, Tammy. I'm glad you joined today. You always leave such nice little notes on my my Facebook page and I appreciate that. And like what Okay, so you guys can pre-dye your um you can pre-dye your muslin and go ahead and use use the blue th thing and it's okay. Well, that's good. Yeah, I've I've never I've never tried that before. I've always sewn everything together and and then um, coffee stained afterwards. Um, oh, and you, oh, you use a pencil. Oh, see? Mm. I, I will tell you too. Yeah, so, like, um, I don't see, I don't have any sitting here right now. Um, I'll probably make this into um, a Halloween Annie doll and, and uh, list her in my Etsy shop. But I know, like, whenever I do the faces, like, I don't think I don't think I've done it every single pattern I've given you guys. But I know, like, whenever we do raggedy ends, when we come to the nose, I'll tell you to lightly trace that nose pattern um, onto the face with a pencil, because I've noticed uh, sometimes with that blue ink. Especially if it's a brand new one, um, and the and it's that when the, when those blue pens are brand new, they are very dark. Um, but the more you use them, the later they get, and the easier they come out. But whenever we do noses for the raggedy ends, I like to trace the nose very lightly with a pencil because it is um, it is easier to cover up uh, with paint. Uh, than the, than the blue pen is. Um, and even like, I, I don't know if you guys noticed this too with the blue pen. 
um, the blue pen and white paint um, don't seem to uh, get along real well either. You, you've, it, it'll take just a little bit more effort. It does come off, but as far as paints go, white paint is the um, is the one that I notice that, that you will have the the most difficult time getting that blue line to go away. But other than that, the blue line's pretty. I don't really um, have an issue, you know, with that. But I I have never done that with pre dyeing the fabric and um, using a pencil. Yeah, that's a good idea. Exactly, Connie. Some on the faces, those blue lines don't want to disappear. So, yeah, using a pencil on the on the face uh, is your best bet. Did somebody say something about the blue end of the pen? I know what pen you're talking about. The dual, the dual pen. What did you say? What What was the comment about the blue per the purple end of the pen? disappearing and I haven't had any issues. Okay, so you can use the purple end of the, because I, I used the um, the disappearing, um, the mark be gone for our stitcheries too, and stitch right on top of the uh, active bag. Um, I'm working, I'm working on a, a Halloween stitcher right now. See, I just stitch right on top of that trace line. And then whenever I go to coffee stain it, um, it just comes comes right out. All right, guys, that was a doll body today. Um, I may, I don't know, I, I may try to do some lives, um, like little, maybe little short ones during the week. Um, I know, like, for, um, to do a live, uh, like, I have a very hard time double tasking. Um, I've just got some medical conditions that, um, you know, I'm, I have to, I'm, I can only focus on one thing at a time. So we do these lives on the weekend whenever my husband can man the chat back there and um, he takes, you know, care of everything going on around me so I can just kind of focus in and, um, you know, do what we had set up to do. but. There's just other little things like um, that I've gotten some notes about, like um, painting shoes on Annie's, painting the stripes on their legs. Thanks, Connie. Um, that's actually one of our stitchery patterns that's available on our website. Um, uh, and then over in our Etsy shop, we are actually giving you kind of a... Um, a deal over there uh, in the Etsy shop with our embroidery patterns um, and we put them in bundles the embroidery patterns uh, it, ju it just it just I don't it's just something we wanted to do we wanted like a just more simplistic thing with the the stitchery patterns and um, we find with the stitchery patterns you either stitch or you don't. I mean, and that's our experience with our customers. You know, um, rarely, and Terry's one of them. Terry, who's in here with us. Um, Terry, I know, stitches and does primitives. But we generally, across the board, either have embroidery customers or we have um, the sewing customers. And just instead of going to our Etsy shop, and trying to list like I think we have like like 400 um, embroidery patterns instead of listing all those singly over on Etsy we put them into bundles and another thing that we wanted to offer with those bundles over in our Etsy shop um, is the fact that um, everybody is not everybody I should shouldn't every a lot a lot of people now are um, doing SVG files and doing the machine embroidery and uh, we want you to be able to do that um, now we're not we we're not selling these so you can use them and sell the SVG files we're not you know they're our copyrighted artwork um, 
Oh, you stitch in me. Okay, we got Connie, too, who does dolls and is a stitcher. That's me, too. I love to do dolls and to stitch. Um, I actually find stitching more relaxing um, than the doll bodies. I can sit and stitch for hours, basically, till I go cross-eyed. Um, but those embroidery bundles over in our Etsy shop, um, we, we give you nine, and we've bunched them into, like, seasons or themes. Um... But they are listed in our Etsy shop under embroidery bundles. And we are giving you nine embroidery bundles for um, uh, $9.99. So that's actually a little bit cheaper than it is on our website. But with those embroidery bundles, Etsy is such a bigger community of people who take artwork and make different things out of it. And that's why we wanted to introduce our... Um, our stitcheries is, is these embroidery bundles and give the option of uh, using these as an SVG um, because there's just so many things that you can do now with the artwork and um, one of them like I said was the machine embroidery but the other thing too was the Cricut and um, like we have a Cricut and I don't know how many of you guys have Cricuts um, but we use our Cricut um, to uh, make some cool things uh, with wood. Like, we have cut out some of our, um, our stitchery patterns. We've converted them to SVG, and we've printed out some really neat vinyl things um, and put them on wood. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's... Uh, why we wanted to get those embroideries over there to, to Etsy um, and just to reach a bit a bigger audience um, so you didn't just have to do the, the stitcheries and another thing um, with the stitcheries too is uh, no we we don't in, include the colors or the instructions or the materials on those embroidery bundle, bundles except for doing the embroidery but they work great for needle punch, they work great for rug hooking. You just have to pick out your um, your own colors. Um, but you can shrink them, you can make them bigger. Um, uh, yeah, they, they I, I'd love it, you know what I mean, to get some of the rug hooking and needle punch, um, you know, community in using our uh, stitchery patterns because um, I think that our designs work out really well for that. But like I said, we just we don't give you the the instructions or the colors for for those, but they work great for them. And I also have, um, I know at least, I'm trying to think, I have at least four people that I can think of offhand um, that use our embroidery patterns to toll paint. So that's that's really cool too. So do do we have a lot of people that use the Cricut? And this is an honest question here too because I I like doing wood. Um, I'd like to know how many people are, um, how many women out there, um, would cut, like, are interested in cutting out their own wood with a, with a jigsaw, um, because they actually do make lightweight, um, jigsaws now that you can, um, that you can cut out wood, um, and make some really some really neat things, but I, I never know. Cool, Debbie, you cut out your own wood with the bandsaw. Yeah, I, I love all kinds of crafts, I really do, and I'd like to make patterns for different things, but I never know how much interest I'll get for them. Like if everybody's just, we're known as, you know, dolls and crafts, and I don't know how many people would be interested in doing other things. Yeah, so that was our doll pattern. Um, 
tutorial for today. I may jump on um, an, like an evening or two this week um, just with something little. Um, like I said, uh, it sometimes it depends on what the boss man back there, um, what his schedule is like because it does help out whenever he's manning things. Um, so hopefully we um, have another project for you um, next weekend. Nice, Connie. Cool, Doubt. Nice. What? Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad you guys are interested um, in some wood stuff. Okay, we're going to go ahead and, and wrap this up. Um, thank you guys so much for coming in and spending some time with me today. Um, I just like you to feel like we come in and we just kind of hang out and you guys can, you know, ask us questions and you guys can talk to each other and exchange information, you know, like tips and techniques with each other. Um, but I just, you know, kind of want to come in here and it just to be, you know, just a little bit of a, a relaxation kind of thing and learn some tips and just, you know, just kind of have a little bit of girl time with the boss man. Um, <laughs> so hopefully we'll be back here again, um, next Sunday with, a um, another project. And I, again, I, I may jump in, you know, maybe, uh, one night this week with, with some, not, nothing like today I found to be, it was elaborate, but I may, you know, jump in, um, sometime this week with, um, just something simple. Okay. Um, we'd appreciate it if you guys would, uh, sprinkle, you have to say sprinkle instead of S-H-A-R-E, um, you know, to sprinkle um, the love, to, to like our video, um, because that actually helps our page um, to get into the, the Facebook, has their whole system of doing things. Um, so, you know, you, you need to get movement going on your page with likes and, and all that other stuff. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys so much. For sharing this time with me today, you can find us at www.chestnutjunction.com and our Etsy shop is www.etsy.com slash shop slash chestnut junction. You guys have a great day. Love you.